Welcome back to Hot Rod Guy Garage. This is going to be another episode on the 1970 Torino. So stick with me through the intro and I'll be back. And alright guys, this video is going to be a little bit different. It's middle of the week. I've been working on the car on and off. But in this video, we're going to address a few safety concerns in preparation for No Name Nationals in September. A uh, big thing with... Uh, Drag racing safety is to make sure you have enough thread engagement on your lug nuts. So let me flip it around. I'll show you what I get, what I'm doing. So if things to escape this video, I did uh, take the 411 gear out of the Torino and uh, put the 325 back in. So that should address our gear deal with the 306 cylinder swap. But the big thing that this video is going to be about is lug stud engagement. Uh, these are the factory axles out of this car with the factory Ford lug studs. And as you can see, they're not super long. But with my aftermarket wheel right here, which is a similar on Telstar, these wheels are quite a bit thicker right here than a factory steel wheel that the car would have came with. And what that means is you need to make sure that you have enough thread engagement. And as you can see right here, by the wear on this stud, we've had about half the stud as thread engagement. Well, let me show you where this comes in. So ideally guys, you want at least a diameter of your stud as far as engagement. And as you can see right there, we were pretty close to that, uh, judging by our witness marks right here. Uh, but the easier way for me to show you is actually stick this drum back on this axle and stick this through this wheel. So give me just a second and I'll be back. So I got our axle and brake drum and wheel mocked up here. And normally I run a closed in chrome lug nut like this just because it looks better. And if you look over here, it's like, oh, well, you got plenty of threads. Well, you put an open ended lug nut on it, guys. That right there will get you run off from any track that you go to. Uh, so there is a solution for that. And I'm going to show you that right now. So, as I've been working along, this is the driver's side. And as you can see, we have uh, more than plenty of thread engagement now. So, what I've done, I hopped on Old Summit Racing, which I'm not sponsored by, by the way. They just had the best price on these studs. And this is a 3-inch stud and their Summit brand bolt seat open-ended lug nuts. As you can see, nobody's going to question our thread engagement. But wait, you didn't show installing them. Hold on, I'll show you. Well, you're going to install these lug studs. You don't have a press. How are you going to get them out? Big old hammer. Just like that. Because we're not reusing them anyway. And this is not the most gentle way to do it. But it does work. So, you wonder, how are you going to get back in? Uh, get your stud. Right here. Old lawnmower wheel bushing. Works great for this. New open ended lug nut, like that. And a little anisease on your threads. You can run them right on back home. Works great. Just make sure whatever you use here does not pinch the threads on your stud, or you just messed up a brand new stud. So, I'm gonna flip y'all around, let you watch, and I'll be back. There's that lawnmower wheel bushing. There's a little anisease that is never going to hurt anything in this situation. Socket. Chinese electric impact. And sometimes you may have to hold it with a pair of pliers. 
just like so until it gets started. until our lug nuts home. Now, it's good to have a couple of sacrificial lug nuts just in case, but the reason why I like to use these lawnmower wheel bushings, it actually makes a taper, and you don't end up damaging your threads or any studs, and it pulls it on down to your flush. Now, Little uh, electric impact right there works pretty well for us. Uh, only thing I don't like about using one of those is there's no brake to them, so it takes a second to stop when you let off throttle. So, gonna continue putting the other five studs in, then we'll get back to our video. And you could always just beat them in from the back if you know you got some way to support the axle and bottom, you know. It's up to you how you put them in. You can put them in press. You can put them in like I showed you. you can beat them in with a hammer. Do what works for you. And you may be thinking, well, I can't afford to change all my lug studs. I understand. I didn't want to get rid of my chrome lug nuts either. And don't really have the money. But when I show you what these uh, Mosier 3 inch wheel studs cost, it's going to blow your mind. So I bought a 10 pack of half 20. Mosier lug studs. I got the receipt right here. They're $27. And for the lug nuts, I spent $16.70. So less than $50, guys. It was a good investment. Uh, now, keep in mind that the front's going to be the same way. And it will probably be okay. But it's been like that for. You know, let's let's just be honest here. Thirty something years, it's had some kind of aftermarket wheel on it. Um, if it comes down to it, I will put a steel wheel back on the front of it. But it's a good cheap way to make sure you're going to pass any kind of tech, any kind of drag strip, because most of them require an open-ended lug nut, at least on the drive wheels. Uh, I know at the No Name Nationals, they check all four, so we will be legal by the time we get there. So, I just wanted to kind of pop in here and make a kind of short video just showing some of the things that I've been doing in the background that you may not see on a normal video that I put out on my scroll. So, there's still a bunch of stuff to do. I've got to add a dry shaft loop. I've got to add a neutral safety switch. I've got to decide if I'm going to put long studs in the front, which I am not going to put an open-end lug nut on this thing on the front for a long-term solution. Uh, I may put some of these three inch studs in there and uh, cut them down. But literally, guys, that right there is your difference. It's about double as long as the factory ones. I know some of the Mopar guys are even more disadvantaged when it comes to studs, and they're not even this long. Uh, with a weld wheel, with these weld lug nuts, you're probably all right with the factory ones. But not with a conical seat lug nut, like what I have. So, I'm going to get back to it, guys, and look forward to another video on this car this weekend. Uh, I do plan on uh, doing some more tuning on it, and there is another car show on Sunday that I do plan on going to, and it's going. So, Stay tuned. Stay tuned for another episode on it. And as always, guys, make sure you hit that like button. Comment down below if you have any questions. And most importantly, hit that subscribe button. Uh, until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.